Hi everyone, this is Lentia, your lenticular expert on YouTube. In this video, I will show you a simple way to make a pseudo 3D lenticular print. We also have another video about true 3D lenticular print. The difference between true 3D and pseudo 3D is that a round object will be perceived as round on a true 3D print, but will be viewed as flat on a pseudo 3D print, although there is a distance between the flat objects. Now you may ask why we want to make pseudo 3D when we can make true 3D. In our video about true 3D we mentioned the need to take multiple pictures of the same scene along a straight line. However, obtaining the source images this way requires very careful planning ahead of time and is not always feasible due to various reasons. For this reason, it makes sense to convert an existing and easily available 2D picture into a 3D lenticular print. When we take pictures along a straight line we get two numbers the number of shots and the parallax. The number of shots is straightforward and it's basically the number of pictures we take along a straight line. This is also the number of stripes under each lenticule. The parallax is the equal distance between each shot. Although for pseudo 3D we are not taking pictures this way, we will use these two numbers in our later interlacing process to simulate the picture taking process. Before proceeding let's talk about what good 3D construction is. A good 3D scene should have a foreground, middle ground, and background. We can always put an imaginary picture frame to our scene. Anything that is in front of the picture frame will be the foreground, anything on the same plane of the picture frame will be the middle ground, and anything behind the picture frame will be the background. When we choose 2D pictures for pseudo 3D we should always keep this in mind to get the best result. Let me share some of the pictures that meet this requirement. A very important piece of information is the true pitch of the lens. I assume you know how to do a pitch test. Please watch our video about the pitch tests if you haven't done so. A pitch test is very important to create a good 3D lenticular print. Let's use a 50 LPI lens for 3D as an example this time. And assume through the pitch test we have found the true line density is in fact 50.51 LPI. We will use this number when we set the resolution of our image later. Here is the picture we will convert from 2D to 3D. As you can see clearly, the tennis player IGA Spiatek will be in the foreground, Rafael Nadal will be in the middle ground, and the chase banner will be in the background. We choose this picture because the foreground, middle ground, and background are easily identifiable and it's also very easy to separate them into layers in Photoshop. We will not touch the process of separating objects from the background because the new version of Photoshop has a very easy way to do it and there are also many videos about this topic. Let's set the resolution of our image before interlacing it. Remember the pitch test result of our lens is 50.51 right? That means in one inch there are 51.51 lenticules. The number of pixels under each lenticule will dictate the resolution. For example, if we want to have 10 pixels under each lenticule, then the resolution of the image should be 51.51 times 10 equals 515.10 dpi. But how do we determine how many pixels should be under each lenticule? In general, the lower the line density, the higher the number of pixels that can be put under each lenticule. This is because low line density lenses have wider lenticules and therefore more space to put more pixels. On the contrary, when the line density is high, the lenticule is so narrow and if too many pixels are put under it the resolution may exceed the resolution your printer can handle. To help decide how many pixels should be put under each lenticule we have created an Excel spreadsheet for you. You can download it from the address in the description area below. The spreadsheet also helps determine the parallax. Just input the width of the print, the distance you want the foreground to come out and the distance you want the background to go away then the spreadsheet will calculate the parallax in a number of pixels for you. We will show you the detail in the following steps. Let's set the width of the print to 10 inches. Since we are using a 50 LPI lens so let's put 50 here. The number of shots or the number of pixels under each lenticule is 6, and the resolution for a 50.51 LPI lens should be 303.06. Let's load the image into Photoshop. As you can see the foreground, middle ground, and background are in different layers. Let's set the print size and then set the resolution to 303.06. With the resolution set properly we can start the interlacing process. First, 
Let's create a 6 by 6 pixel image and fill it black. Delete the last column, select all and define this as pattern 1. Fill the square black again and delete the second to last column. Select all and define this as pattern 2. Continue this to delete the next left column, select all and define this as pattern 3. Repeat this for the next three columns until pattern 6 is defined. At this point, we have six patterns to be used in our next step. Back to our spreadsheet, let's put 1 inch for the foreground to come out, and 2.5 inches for the background to go in. The spreadsheet gives us the answer of 11 pixels for the foreground parallax and 22 pixels for the background parallax. Keep in mind though, these distances are calculated from an empirical formula that will change depending on the viewing distance. So don't expect they will be exactly what you want. Come back to our source file. Select the Paint Bucket tool from the toolbar, and choose Pattern from the Fill Bucket pull-down. Open the Pattern pull-down and click on the small setting icon to choose Large List. Select the foreground layer and press Ctrl-J to duplicate the layer. Select the newly created layer, and keep pressing Ctrl and the plus key to blow up the picture. Select the Move icon from the toolbar and then press the left arrow key 11 times. Please remember the parallax for the foreground is always left. Press Ctrl-J again to duplicate the layer with 11 pixels already moved to the left. Press the left arrow key again 11 times. Repeat this until we have 6 layers. You may want to rename the layers to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now on layer 1, create a mask and fill it with pattern 1. On layer 2 create a mask and fill it with pattern 2. Repeat until the mask of layer 6 is filled with pattern 6. Here we have the foreground has been interlaced. We don't interlace the middle ground because it's on the focal plane. We now need to interlace the background. The step is similar to interlacing the foreground except that we are moving the layers to the right instead of the left. This is very important and if you mess up the direction the print will look very strange. Also instead of moving 11 pixels, we are moving 22 pixels this time we need the background to go deeper into the picture. Please watch slowly how this is done. There you go. The interlaced image has been created. Merge the layers, print it, and laminate it with a lenticular lens. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful please press the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. Leave us a message if you have questions. See you next time.